To reach the farthest corners of space, SpaceX needs more than just powerful rockets. It needs the ability to fly longer and more sustainably. But to do that, it needs a lot of fuel. That's where the game-changing refueling system comes into play. SpaceX knows this, and they're developing a groundbreaking method to overcome the final barrier that's holding humanity back from truly exploring the stars. So how exactly will this innovative refueling system work, and what steps does SpaceX need to take to make it a reality? Let's dive into it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Refueling is undeniably one of the most crucial aspects of space exploration. Every mission requires an enormous amount of fuel, much of which is rapidly consumed when the rocket escapes Earth's gravitational pull. However, the long journey that follows, along with the numerous tasks that must be completed, also demands a significant fuel supply. Mars and the Moon are envisioned as future refueling stations to support even more distant missions. But before humanity can establish these outposts, we must first develop an efficient and reliable in-space refueling system. Creating such a system is an immense challenge, but once it is in place, it'll offer a significant advantage to rockets, particularly Starship. With its massive size, a fully fueled Starship will be capable of transporting hundreds of tons of cargo and entire crews of astronauts. Upon reaching its destination, it can serve various purposes, such as returning large quantities of samples, delivering critical equipment, or even acting as the foundation for the first extraterrestrial base. These capabilities will make Starship the most advanced and versatile spacecraft ever built. However, all of this potential hinges on one essential factor, fuel. Without an effective refueling system, the rocket's capabilities will remain severely limited. With the need for refueling clear, SpaceX is now faced with the challenge of turning this vision into reality. At this point, there are two primary approaches that could be taken to achieve in-space refueling, directly connecting two starships in orbit or constructing a dedicated fuel depot. The first method involves launching two starships nearly simultaneously. First, the main spacecraft, known as the Starship Target, would be sent into orbit. Shortly after, the second spacecraft, called the Starship Tanker, or Chaser, would launch to rendezvous with the main ship. These two spacecraft would then navigate through space at speeds of up to 20,000 kilometers per hour to precisely align and connect for fuel transfer. To accomplish this, the two ships would likely be equipped with a primary fuel transfer system, which would involve a tube approximately 50 centimeters in diameter. Several methods have been proposed for transferring the fuel. One option is to use a pump, which would be a reliable but complex system, requiring additional hardware. Another approach involves leveraging the spacecraft's movement and inertia to facilitate fuel transfer, though this would be highly dependent on various factors, making it less predictable. A simpler and potentially more effective solution would involve using pressure differences. The fuel tank in the Starship tanker would be maintained at a higher pressure than the tank in the main ship. Once connected, the fuel would naturally flow from the higher pressure tank to the lower pressure tank eliminating the need for additional pumping mechanisms. However, this concept still requires extensive testing before it can be confirmed as a viable solution. One of the main challenges with this approach is that a single Starship tanker would not be enough to fully refuel the main Starship. Instead, at least 10 refueling missions would need to be launched in succession, requiring precise timing, coordination, and rapid execution. Once the refueling process is complete, the main starship would proceed with its mission, while the tankers, lacking heat shields and reentry flaps, would likely burn up upon returning to Earth's atmosphere. This method, while feasible, demands extreme readiness, precision, and efficiency, making it a highly complex undertaking. That is why an alternative method, building a fuel depot in orbit may be a more attractive solution. In this second approach, a large refueling depot would be constructed in orbit to store enough fuel for one or more starships. Starship tankers would launch at regular intervals, not as urgently as in the first method, to gradually fill the depot with fuel. Then, when the main starship is ready for its mission, it would travel to the depot, dock, and refuel before continuing its journey. This method would take longer to establish, but it would significantly reduce the time-sensitive nature of each refueling operation. 
One major advantage of the depot approach is that it alleviates the urgency that comes with launching and coordinating multiple refueling missions in quick succession. It would also simplify the docking process as the Starship would only need to connect once to receive fuel rather than constantly navigating, connecting, and disconnecting from multiple tankers. However, constructing the depot itself presents a major challenge. The facility would need to be large, highly durable, and capable of storing vast amounts of fuel safely for extended periods. Developing this infrastructure would require significant time and resources, and since it is a long-term solution, construction would need to begin well in advance of any major missions. Both methods present unique advantages and challenges. The direct connection method allows for a faster refueling process but requires intense coordination and rapid execution. Meanwhile, the depot method eliminates the urgency and provides a more stable refueling solution, though it would take longer to implement. Each approach has its own hurdles, from developing the necessary hardware to ensuring the proper storage and transfer of fuel in the harsh environment of space. Which method do you think would be more suitable for SpaceX's long-term ambitions? Reply with 1 if you believe the direct connection method is the better choice, or 2 if you think a dedicated fuel depot is the way to go. If you have another idea, feel free to share your thoughts and discuss it with others in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's groundbreaking journey to the stars. Of course, there's no denying that in-space refueling is one of the most difficult challenges in making Starship fully operational. Arguably, it's the most difficult. The first major hurdle comes from Starship's sheer size, which, while one of its biggest strengths, also presents a significant challenge when it comes to refueling. As we've seen in previous flights, Starship carries thousands of tons of fuel, yet by the time it reaches space, very little remains. This will be true not just for a standard Starship, but also for the dedicated Starship tanker variant. Regardless of the specific refueling method SpaceX ultimately chooses, every deep space Starship mission will require at least 10 Starship tanker flights to fully replenish its fuel. This presents a massive challenge in terms of production capacity, launch readiness, and overall logistics. The second challenge is the docking and connection process between two Starships. This operation is highly dependent on precise movement, the surrounding environment, and near-perfect accuracy. Even a minor miscalculation could lead to a failed refueling attempt. Unlike traditional docking maneuvers where a spacecraft connects to a stable station, two massive fully loaded starships will have to align and maintain position in microgravity while fuel transfers. This level of complexity will require extensive testing and refinement. Then there's the issue of fuel behavior in space. No one has ever demonstrated the large-scale transfer of cryogenic propellants like liquid methane and liquid oxygen in microgravity. Without the proper containment and management techniques, the fuel could easily evaporate or behave unpredictably, leading to major losses and inefficiencies. Beyond these technical challenges, there's also the reality that no such system has ever been built before. SpaceX isn't just refining an existing process, they're pioneering an entirely new one. Because of this, the number of unforeseen problems that could arise is completely unknown. Despite these challenges, SpaceX has reason to be confident. For one, they've already demonstrated that liquid oxygen can be managed in space. During Flight 3's Tipping Point mission, they appeared to successfully transfer fuel from Starship's header tank to its main tank, proving at least some level of feasibility for in-space fluid management. Additionally, SpaceX has been steadily mastering high-precision operations, from booster landings to ascent trajectories. As they refine these techniques, they're laying the groundwork for even more complex tasks required to make in-orbit refueling a reality. While the road ahead is uncertain, one thing is clear. If any company is capable of solving this challenge, it's SpaceX. Indeed, SpaceX will also need to ramp up preparations even further in the coming months and years to meet the ambitious demands of Starship's future missions. Production speed must increase drastically to meet Starship demand. SpaceX is already shifting to mass production at the Star Factory, 
with expanding assembly bays and streamlined vehicle designs. The first Starship V-2, Ship 33, was built in just 41 days, showcasing rapid progress. To scale further, larger production bays like Gigabays must be built, and full-scale production of Starship V-2 must transition swiftly to V-3, which NASA will use for in-orbit refueling. Launch and recovery infrastructure also needs expansion. While Pad B at Starbase is progressing, additional launch and catching systems are required at Starbase and Florida. Fuel storage and transfer capabilities must grow to support frequent launches and orbital refueling. In-space operations must be reliable. Raptor engine reignition, payload deployment, and upper stage landings need further testing to refine precision and docking control. Refueling tests will be the final step validating SpaceX's system for Artemis 3 in 2027. The challenges are immense, but at this pace, fully reusable, refuelable spacecraft traveling to the moon and beyond will soon be a reality. The path to conquering the vastness of space is now within reach, and the key to unlocking it lies in the development of an advanced refueling system. Creating and operating such a system presents immense challenges, pushing the boundaries of engineering, production, and even the fundamental laws of physics. However, once this barrier is overcome, SpaceX's Starship will become the most powerful and capable spacecraft ever built. With sufficient fuel, It'll unlock unprecedented possibilities for space exploration, from deep space missions to human settlements on other worlds. And this groundbreaking journey begins this year. Let's watch as SpaceX defies expectations and pushes the limits of what's possible. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly and the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.